calling all chocolate lovers. It's time to get downright decadent. Wow. Get your chocolate on. Woo! <laughs> Ten hopeful home bakers will put their passion and their skills to the test as they dive into the delectable world of chocolate. It's about to be a fun ride, y'all. Each week, the bakers will be tested on a wide range of chocolate-based challenges by a panel of world-class expert judges. Award-winning cake designer, Cynthia Stroud. Master chocolatier and pastry chef, Steve. And renowned pastry chef and best-selling cookbook author, Anna Olson. Let your imagination go wild. Woo! Each new challenge will bring struggles oh, and setbacks. It's just really stressful. This is a lot harder than it looks. As they bake their way through the opportunity of a lifetime. I love this. I thought it was delicious. But only one baker will have their fairy tale ending. This was an epic dessert. The journey begins right now on Great Chocolate Showdown. Oh. <laughs> Yo, this kitchen is a baker's paradise. Welcome, bakers, to Great Chocolate Showdown. Woo! All of you are here in this spectacular kitchen because you deserve to be here. So now it's time to show us your personality, show us your passion, and show us your love of baking and chocolate. The next chapter in your baking story happens right at the ends. Well, that's up to you. <laughs> because only one of you will be named Great Chocolate Showdown Champion and take home the grand prize of $50,000. <laughs> Throughout this competition, you'll be taught useful skills that will take your desserts to new heights. Your first technique test begins now. Bakers, you all know that tempering is a building block in chocolate making. There are three key elements to tempering chocolate. Temperature and movement. You know you've achieved perfect temper in your chocolate when you have a shine, and a snap. Ooh, oh. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's make a chocolate carousel. <laughs> there are three main pieces to this chocolate carousel. Your base, your pole, and your roof. I'm gonna first cast the roof. I'm gonna give it two fairly good sized scoops of chocolate. We just wanna slowly coat that mold, the roof to the side, and I'm gonna make the pole. I have my acetate paper, which I've turned into a pole. I place it into my cup with some plastic wrap around to hold it sturdy and straight. And then we fill it up all the way. <laughs> okay. Let's make the base. So I'm gonna pipe chocolate into the base of this, about half an inch thick. A light bang, and we'll allow that to set. You can throw it in the fridge to speed up the process. Next, let's decorate. And I wanna add some filigree to it. So I'm gonna show you how to pipe them. With our piping bag, treat it as a pen or a pencil. And then with a steady hand, we're gonna trace over our filigree. I have all pieces to the carousel set. Now we're gonna assemble and decorate our carousel. I painted my base, I painted my roof. So I'm gonna score it with my knife. Those little indents in the chocolate, tempered chocolate will seep into there and that will lock. And I have cold spray, this will speed up the process. Now, I'm gonna place chocolate on the top of the pole chocolate underneath. Now, I'm gonna place this roof on top. Next, our filigree. Rub that in there like that. I'm gonna place it on my roof. Boom. There you have it. My beautiful carousel. Hey. For your first technique test, you will have to replicate this chocolate carousel and fill it with six miniature desserts. Wow. Decorate your carousels with pops of your personality and give us a taste of who you are with your desserts. Two and a half hours to complete this technique test. Make sure your carousels catch our eyes because only six desserts will be tasted. The three bakers who impress us the most eat safety and will not have to compete in the upcoming chocolate elimination challenge. Ready, steady, Here we go. get your sweet on. <laughs> 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 
You might need these. Luster dust. I'm about to temper chocolate. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm Vince, I'm 31 years old, and I'm a freelance artist. I am a singer and musician. I do photography, social media coordinating. I am a super creative guy, so baking 1,000%. My carousel is inspired by my hometown, Atlanta, and for my many desserts. I'm doing some Georgia pecan brownies because I want the judges to feel like they're in Atlanta. Hopefully, I'll get it done in time. <laughs> I'm Amber. I'm 43 years old, and I'm a bartender from Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> my life is wild, so baking is that one place where I can go and connect with the things that I'm passionate about, and that is making beautiful desserts. For my mini dessert, I am making salted caramel shortbread cookies dipped in dark chocolate. But first, I have a lot of chocolate. I need to get started so I can fill my chocolate molds. It's definitely a workout, not gonna lie. I got this. I'm Sean, I'm 34 years old, and I'm a fashion stylist. As a fashion stylist, being creative is in my bone, it's in my blood, and that comes into play as a baker. And being hard of hearing, my other senses, my visual and my taste comes into play. So I use my weakness to my advantage. So I'm gonna be making pistachio cardamom and gold. And for my carousel, I'm thinking of my love for French. And that makes me think of Chateau de Versailles and gold. So I'm gonna be infusing that into my carousel. Let's do this. Beautiful, starting to cool down. My name is Connie, I'm 42 years old, and I'm a stay-at-home mom. Baking runs in my family. My parents are both bakers. For my six mini desserts, I'm making cashew fingers rolled up in a phyllo dough topped with chocolate drizzle. Beautiful. I'm Evan, I'm 31 years old, and I'm a guest service manager at a zoo. Working with animals is an absolute dream. I'll never forget telling my mom, you know, when I grow up, I'm gonna train elephants. 18 years later, I found myself at the Tulsa Zoo training elephants. I'm a go-getter, I'm determined, and when it comes to baking, I'm a control freak. <laughs> For my six mini desserts, I'm actually going to make chocolate orange donuts covered in rainbow sugar. My husband's kind of my biggest supporter. He's also a little bit of a donut snob, so I wanted to make my first bake for him. I am Lexi, I am 24 years old, and I am a model. I started modeling when I was 15 years old, and it's an incredible job, but baking and modeling is kind of a weird combo, but they're both creating art. For my six mini desserts, I am making pistachio chocolate strawberry penny fours with strawberry jam, a little chocolate ganache, and a white chocolate fondant glaze. I'm Bree, I'm 33 years old, and I'm an office manager at a mortgage company. Competing here in great chocolating because I definitely have a lot to learn. For my carousel, my vision is a dark chocolate carousel painted with luxurious fall colors that match my dessert, which is going to be miniature sweet potato pie bites dipped in gold chocolate with a shortbread crust. Sweet potato pie is a staple in African-American dessert in the fall. It smells like my grandma's house. This is a good thing. <laughs> I'm Gavin, I'm 45, and I'm a stay-at-home dad. 10 years ago, I gave up my original day job. Baking gives me the chance to find my space where I could prosper, grow, and just bloom. For my desserts, I'm making ginger and Szechuan peppercorn chocolate shortbread hearts and they're gonna be decorated in the overall theme of what my carousel will be, which is love at the fairground. Despite the mohawk tats and beard, I can be romantic just as much as any romance movie. I feel like I'm the messiest person right now. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, I'm Miley, I'm 35 years old, and I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have three beautiful children, perhaps. I'm a chef, I'm a teacher, I do it all, but I love it. For my six mini desserts, I'm making passion fruit bars with a white chocolate oat crust. I love being accurate, so I'm gonna measure how much I pour into here. My name is Ian, I'm 28 years old, and I'm a finance manager. As a baker, I'm very calculated. Everything has to be to scale. So for my six mini desserts, I'll be making ruby chocolate raspberry financiers. 
The financier is a small French almond cake flavored with brown butter, and it's soft on the inside, but crispy on the out. Let's check on my mold to see how it's doing. As I'm taking the white chocolate base out of the mold, it's getting stuck. Come on. If this base doesn't come out in one piece, I'm doomed for this challenge. Come on. As I'm taking the white chocolate base out of the mold, it's getting stuck. Come on. If this base doesn't come out in one piece, I'm doomed for this challenge. There we go. 30 minutes left on the clock. Amazing. For this technique test, we have to make a chocolate carousel and six mini desserts. How are we doing, bakers? I'm moving, I'm moving. I don't know whether I'm moving in the right direction, but hey. I'm feeling completely stressed. There is still lots to do. I have to finish off those mini desserts and I have to decorate those delicate little filigree. The bakers are now assembling their carousel. And because only six bakers' desserts will be tasted, they will all be judged immediately on their looks. Oh, my pulls are so nerve-wracking. If there was one thing that could go wrong, it's all going wrong. Oh my god. Like, I want to cry. Good thing I made two. How have I used all of my sheets? Oh, shoot. Oh, dang it. Why isn't it staying? Bakers, one minute left. Let's do this. Let's go. OK, I can do this. Beautiful. My filigree are melting. Keep going. Deep breath. I'm not happy. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Woo! Proud of us. OK, bakers, now we're going to come around and take a closer look. But remember, we will only be tasting six of your desserts. I'm like a puppy in an adoption center. Please pick me. I really don't want to have to bake in the elimination round. Please. <laughs> Bakers, we asked you to replicate a tempered chocolate carousel and fill it with six mini desserts. The first dessert we'd like to try belongs to Gavin. Ooh. My desserts are ginger and Szechuan peppercorn chocolate shortbread hearts. My chocolate carousel is my first day to the fairground. You obviously have some good memories <laughs> about going to the fair. Mm. Well, Gavin, that sense of love and a bit of whimsy does come through in this carousel but your base is a little thick. Your roof is on an angle. Unless it was windy when you were at the fair last time. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's it. Your chocolate is set, but it's not in full temper. See, no snap. Shall we have a taste? Absolutely. I think we should. Well, I was slightly concerned about ginger and the peppercorn, but the flavor of it actually does work, surprisingly. Gavin, thank you so much. You can head back to your baker's table. Thank you, judges. The next dessert we'd like to try belongs to... Brie. For my carousel, I made sweet potato pie bites with gold chocolate dip. You got a good base, a good scale, and you added a little personal detail here. A B for Brie? It is. Okay. You said you have a lot of luster dust on here. So uh, you could be hiding some imperfections that I can't see. Do you think this chocolate's in temper? I think it is. No! I do like that you covered it up, though. Luster dust. Make up for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for us to taste. Yes. That was the best sweet potato pie I've ever tasted. Oh my God. I posed very cleverly the gold chocolate to dip it in and you balanced it quite nicely with the spices. Thank you. 
Sham, please bring us your dessert. I made pistachio cardamom and gold chocolate macarons. I wanted to take a little bit of the French inspiration, so I thought, what could be any better than Chateau de Versailles? Versailles, Paris, this works because we've got precision. And you took it the extra level. Details here and up on top. And that just shows so beautifully. Thank you. But is it in temper? Let's see. You can see the shine there. It is in temper. Great work. The texture was beautiful but I didn't actually get the cardamom as much as I expected to. But what you did deliver was a properly made, very tasty Madeleine carousel. Because that's a work of art. Thank you. That compliment is pretty much one of the highlight in my entire life. The next dessert we'd like to try is from Connie. I made cashew fingers with dark chocolate drizzle. I'm here to represent my children, and all of my children's first ride at an amusement park was a carousel. You've given us quite a pop of color. Do you think your chocolate's in temper? Yes. Well, let's see. Your chocolate's in temper. <laughs> well, let's taste these desserts. Well, that was my first cashew finger and your filo pastry was baked to perfection. However, I felt a little bit disappointed on the taste. The light drizzle of dark chocolate wasn't quite enough to give me that chocolate hit. Okay. Thank you so much. You can head back. Bakers, there are desserts left to taste. The next carousel belongs to Lexi. I made for you pistachio petit fours with strawberry jam and a chocolate ganache inside. And then a white chocolate fondant glaze on top. In terms of your carousel execution, the proportion, the scale, and the precision is what captured our attention. But the filigree is missing on the outside and a little detail on top. Your chocolate is not, oh. there's no snap. And it was intensely sweet. But that's exactly what a petit four is supposed to be. It's meant to be that little two bite of, woo, have a sip of tea and move on. Thank you, judges. We only have one dessert left, and that dessert belongs to... We only have one dessert left to taste. And that dessert belongs to... Evan. Please tell us all about your carousel, your mini desserts, and what they tell us about you. I wanted to bring together two of the things that I love most in the world. So for my mini dessert, I've made chocolate orange donuts, go sugar. And that's kind of a love letter to my husband. And my inspiration for my carousel comes from my work with elephants. And so I wanted to do a filigree that kind of looked like the side profile of an elephant's head and trunk. Your carousel does tell your story. And I'm glad you stuck with it and didn't give up. But unfortunately, your filigree is not in temper. I don't even have to snap it. Yeah. The softness of the donut and the crunchiness of the sugar was just perfectly balanced. You get the chocolatiness from your cocoa, but you also get the citrus punch. Nicely done, Evan. Thank you. I feel like I definitely made my husband proud. Bakers, we asked you to replicate a tempered chocolate carousel and then put your own spin on it by making six mini desserts. Miley, Vince, Amber and Ian. Unfortunately, your desserts were not selected to be tasted. So, all four of you will be baking in the upcoming challenge. The three bakers who impressed us the most 
will be granted sweet safety and will not have to bake in the upcoming challenge. When I call your name, please step forward. Connie. Sean. And. Evan. Congratulations. You three created our favorite desserts of the challenge. Well done. But the best dessert of this gave us delicate flavors and lovely details that stole our hearts. And that dessert belongs to... Sean. <laughs> I never expected that I would win the first challenge. Congratulations. Your ode to Versailles was shimmering and opulent. Thank you. Excellent job, bakers. Please take a seat in sweet safety. The rest of you will have to bake again. But this time, you're fighting to... Bakers, behold the cabinet of curiosities. Wow. We've gathered a selection of unique items to use as inspiration for your next dessert. For your first chocolate elimination challenge, we want you to create a chocolate dessert inspired by the item you choose. Brie, please come up and choose an item. Gavin, please choose. Lexi. <laughs> Miley. Ian. Okay. Amber. And Vince. Mm -hmm. Some intriguing selections. We can't wait to taste the stories behind them. To our fully stocked pantry, and only two hours to complete your desserts. Oh, I... Remember, the baker that presents us with our least favorite dessert will be going home. Ready, steady. Get your chocolate on! Come on, you guys. Oh, my go. oh my gosh! You got this. I chose the seashell because I love the beach. I'm picturing a cake that is going to be beautifully aqua with sand and waves and coral. For this chocolate elimination challenge, wine cake with a calamansi mango curd. I hope the judges love it. Ian, what are you making? Today, I'll be making an Okay. <laughs> I chose the microphone because karaoke is just such a lovely tradition that me and my family like to partake in. Hopefully I'll be able to convey that message through my dessert. After that technique test, I really got to impress the judges. So I am making an opera cake with a chocolate coffee creme anglaise. An opera cake is a French dessert with many components. You start off with a jacond sponge, which is an almond cake game, as well as chocolate ganache topped with a chocolate glaze. Will it sing? Will it sing? We are going to learn so much about our bakers right now. Because food tells a story. And they're cooking from the heart. Sadly, one of them will have to go home. And it breaks my heart because I feel like they're literally putting their heart and soul into this. This is one of my husband's favorite things. I'm making chocolate haupia mini pies. Haupia actually means coconut pudding in Hawaii. I'm doing a pie crust base coconut pudding, and then a traditional coconut pudding on top of that and chantilly cream on top of that. I'm representing the canoe in my dessert through the shape of my molds. I grew up in Hawaii canoe paddling, so I want to show the flavors of where I come from. I chose a gift box because it instantly reminds me of Christmas. I got engaged at Christmas, I got married at Christmas, so it's hugely important for me. So I'm going to make a tempered chocolate box in which I'm going to serve hazelnut and cranberry biscotti with some peppermint hot chocolate on the side. I'm hopeless of Christmas, those kind of warm, cuddly feelings. Ooh, yay! For my object, I chose book because my dream is to write a cookbook. I'm making a white chocolate French fruit tart with a shortbread crust filled with white chocolate and fresh fruit. 
and a tempered white chocolate accent. Let's hope this works. Every time I sit down to write, I always make myself a cup of tea and have a beautiful French fruit tart. It is one of my favorite desserts in the whole wide world. Um, okay. I'm going to make a little tart with a shortbread crust in the shape of a point shoe. It is going to be filled with a fluffy white chocolate mousse with a little raspberry lemon kind of ribbon on top. I picked the point shoes because I grew up doing dance. I started when I was three. Ballet is very classical, so am I, and I think this dish reflects that. Oh, you're so cute! In this challenge, I'm most stressed about time because I can't mess up the timing again. Queen of multitasking here. Where is my flower? I'm planning to make a white chocolate lemon cake with cream cheese frosting. I'm adding a cream cheese batter into a traditional white chocolate cake batter. I want to show the judges that I'm a risk taker. I chose the treble clef because I'm a musician. I love to write songs, I love to perform. Music has literally saved my life and given me beyond amazing opportunities. So I am excited. I hope I wasn't too ambitious. Hour left, and I still have to get this buttercream going. Oh, no. The calamansi curd that I put what I thought was the freezer, I actually put in the blast chiller. You cannot put frozen solid curd in the middle of a cake. So now I'm panicking, because if you don't thaw curd right, it's going to go grainy, and I don't have time to make another batch. So I got to figure something out, and I got to figure it out fast. Okay, 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 okay. I'm panicking. The calamansi curd was frozen solid. I've spent so much time on this and I don't have time to make another batch. Luckily, I had turned my oven off when my cakes came out, but it was still kind of warm. So I popped the calamansi curd into the oven and hope for the best. God, please let this work. 30 minutes left, bakers, 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. Let's go, you got this. Okay, let's rock and roll. The biscotti and the hot chocolate are done. And now it's time to move on to making my tempered chocolate gift. Some shapes to form the lid and the base. However, as I'm taking them off their molds, they're just breaking and melting in my hands. Oh, that was no good. So I realized that I am not going to get a box out of this. I'm going to have to do a deconstructed box. I decided to draw wedding rings belonging to my husband and I on what would have been the lid of the box. So rather than actually have nothing for the judges, I'm trying to just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Bakers, 10 minutes left. No, say it ain't so. Oh, my goodness. Hustle. I only have 10 minutes left. I have to assemble my dark shells. I've got my white chocolate mousse. I've got my raspberry sauce. And I'm realizing my lemon curd is way too thin. Ah! I don't think that's set properly. I cannot use it looking like this. I just do not have time to deal with this lemon curd. I have to accept that it will be without it. So time to go with the lemon zest on top. I hope it comes through. Five minutes, bakers! Five minutes to go! Ooh, Ooh, that's ugly. This is a lot harder than it looks. Woo! We got this. Final push. Think about those plates. Good. They're getting more cake. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. up. Woo! Woo! This is so exciting. <laughs> so we made it. <laughs> Aesthetically, this cake is not my best work. But I know for a fact that it will taste delicious. Bakers, we asked you to create a chocolate dessert inspired by an object that you chose from the cabinet of Curie. Lexi, please bring us your dessert. I have made a white chocolate mousse tart with a raspberry ribbon in the shape of a point shoe. I chose the point shoe because I have danced my entire life. It means the entire world to me. I like the simplicity and the elegance of your plate, and that is part of the beauty of dance. Classical ballet has that discipline, and you've given us that reflection of that precision on the plate. All 
the different aspects individually tasted really good, but they just didn't blend well enough. It was a little bit of a fight on a fork. I liked the precision and the elegance of your plated dessert, but I got only a whisper of white chocolate when I wanted a little more. Thank you. Ian, please bring us your dessert. I like to present to you my opera cake, <laughs> chocolate coffee creme anglaise. The microphone reminds me of having karaoke time. And if you actually look at the top, I've piped the word opera in two colors to represent the words of when you're doing karaoke. There's one word for this opera cake. Ambitious. <laughs> it's really quite pretty. Thank you. Ian, your French buttercream was flavorful and your layers of ganache melted in my mouth. My only issue... An opera cake is meant to have your sponge and your filling almost 50-50. Mm. But flavor-wise, I would eat this all day long. Thank you so much. Amber, please bring us your dessert. I chose books for my object because I'm a writer. And for this dessert, I made a white chocolate French fruit tart because it was the first dessert that made me want to become a baker. And my dream of writing a cookbook started that day. Amber, what you produce in the massive hot mess. And this is absolutely amazing. Thank you. But do you think your chocolate's in temper? It actually is in temper. Good work. Thank you. Amber, your dessert looked lovely, but we have to have a little chat about how it tastes. Amber, your dessert looked lovely. to have a little chat about how it tastes. I thought it was delicious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the balance of your rich white chocolate filling with the fruit was exquisite. But the thickness of your pie crust in parts of your dessert was nice and balanced. In some parts, it was chunky. But it tastes so good. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> Vince, please bring us your dessert. I have prepared for you a white chocolate lemon cake, Cliff, because I am a classically trained vocalist as well as instrumentalist. I play the oboe and the English horn. And with me being a musician, I place a treble clef on top of the cake and white chocolate as well as a bass clef and eighth notes as well. Excellent. Shall we? Vince. You know, your presentation, it's way beyond rustic. Your cream cheese frosting is quite runny. And as you can see, the filling vanished. However, a beautiful taste, but I don't know what it is. I combined a traditional white chocolate cake batter with a white chocolate cream cheese batter. Got it. The cream cheese frosting belongs on a different cake. It takes away from what I find is the complexity of the batter, but what you achieved in two hours, it's hard to bake any type of cheese cake because it takes so long to set. But you delivered that to us. Thank you so much. You can head back. Thank you so much. I'm nervous because I could potentially be the first one to sit home, and that's not a good feeling. <sighs> Please bring us your dessert. I made you a chocolate coconut pudding pie in the shape of a canoe, which was my object. And I grew up canoe paddling. Well, Miley, I immediately see the translation right to the blue swoosh of the water. We've got nice precision and detail on the plate. Thank you. Shall we take yeah, the boat out of the water? Let's do it. Miley. Your chocolate ganache was on point, and you definitely know how to make a coconut casting. In terms of the balance of flavor, if I were to describe it all in one word, I would say mild. However, my main concern is your high crust, which is underbaked. 
Miley, thank you very much. You can head back. Thank you. I feel really disappointed that I didn't cook my pie crust correctly. Gavin, it's your turn. I made for you a hazelnut and cranberry chocolate biscotti with a peppermint hot chocolate. I chose the gift box because I instantly thought of Christmas and my husband and I ended up proposing to each other at the same time on Christmas Day. Well, that just ties a bow on how your object connects to the dessert. Unfortunately, your chocolate is not in temper. You can tell by the humidity spots. And if you were to run your finger along there, you'd feel the little sugar crystals. Gavin, your biscotti to me was just right. You had the lovely hazelnuts, which I could tell were toasted. It's like it was just a simple dip in a coffee biscotti. It felt more luxurious. Gavin, we've now seen two cookies from you. Should you move ahead, the expectation will be to see something different. Thank you so much. You can head back. Thank you, judges. Bree. Please bring us your dessert. I chose the seashell because I love the beach. What I've presented to you is a sparkling wine cake with a calamansi mango curd. Well, the sea is... Brie, I love the use of chocolate on your cake. And you weren't afraid to take a risk. And you built coral. The texture of this batter was like a light, airy, tender sponge. And I got the hint of sparkling wine there. But what it lacks is that white chocolate taste. OK. Thank you. Bakers, thank you so much for giving us a taste of who you really are. Judges, decision ahead. Bakers, we asked you to create a dessert based on a meaningful object that you chose. When I call your name, please step forward. Amber. Miley. Ian. And Bree. The four of you had our favorite desserts of the challenge. Congratulations. <laughs> but the best dessert belongs to the baker who told a sweet story and enticed us with a very impressive dessert. That dessert belongs to... Ian. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. <laughs> Ian, your opera cake deserves a standing ovation. If this is how you begin the competition, we can't wait to see the Congratulations to the four of you. You will move on to the next round of the competition. Thank you. Thank you. Lexi, Gavin, and Vince, unfortunately, you did not do as well. Lexi, we thought that your ballet-inspired tart was clean and elegant. However, your short crust overpowered your white chocolate mousse. Gavin, you romanced us with your Christmas proposal story, but your clunky plating failed to in... Vince, the story behind your white chocolate cake really struck a chord with us. However, the lack of clear direction in your dessert was evident in its unrefined execution. Sadly, one of you must leave this kitchen. The baker who is going home is... Vince. Vince, it's clear that baking is just one of your many passions. We want you to continue your baking journey. We know there are incredible things in store for you. We hope you leave this kitchen with a sweet song oh. in your heart. <laughs> Thank you so much from all of us. Well, it's a wrap on me. This whole experience was sweet. I had a lot of fun being here on the Cray Chocolate Show Sound. Next time on Great Chocolate Showdown. This is it. <laughs>
I need to step up my game. Nine home bakers push to perfect their piping skills. It's looking pretty good. It's not working. But there's a sweet golden advantage up for grabs. The golden whisk can be used for immunity. Ah! Things heat up as the competitors struggle to keep their cool. There's a lot riding on this. Woo! I did not like one bit of it.